to know. The BBC's Emma Vardy there. A British company has cut the price of medical cannabis, meaning that it's now cheaper than illegal street cannabis. Despite the government allowing prescriptions, they're only given rarely on the NHS. That's because of the high cost, guidelines saying they should only be offered when all other options have been exhausted, and the fact that some of the products don't have a licence. Private prescriptions can cost hundreds of pounds, meaning they're too expensive for most patients, but that's now set to change. Chris Hemmings reports. I started using cannabis around about 2007. I was getting a lot of nausea from anxiety. I wasn't going out at all. I woke up one morning, I couldn't stop being sick. I was going into hospital a lot in order to have these panic attacks being treated. Um, and I came across cannabis, basically. Took a couple of puffs. And within minutes, the nausea that I'd been getting, it just completely vanished. Since December last year, Lee has been using medicinal cannabis oil to treat his anxiety. He originally went to the NHS, but was told it was unlikely he'd get a prescription. So he went private, which meant, like many others, he had to foot the bill. The first product um, I received from Canada, that cost £300. That would last about a month. It was just so expensive, really expensive. And at the time I was on benefits... Um, I was on zero hours contracts and it was just a nightmare trying to afford it, basically. For most people, that meant black market cannabis was more affordable. But now a British company has produced a product that's cheaper than getting it from dealers. Now I'm using a product that costs £80 and it lasts for two months. But on the black market, I was paying up to £70 a week. So what's happened that means Lee and others can now get this in legal medicinal form cheaper than ever before. Until now, medical cannabis being distributed in the UK had come through various companies at different steps along the supply chain. At each step, cost was added. A British company, EMAC, is now the first in the UK at every stage of that process, removing those additional costs. Ed McDermott is their co-founder. So we've taken a vertically integrated approach to our business model, which means that we control cultivation, processing, manufacturing and distribution, essentially cutting out middlemen. Unfortunately, it's a private market still, so it's not publicly funded, which means that patients are self-paying. Ultimately, price is, is a significant part of that. By bringing that price down, by allowing a supply chain to work efficiently and, and, and create cost savings, we're able to pass that on. They grow the flower in Portugal and extract the THC in Spain, and then it's exported here to the northeast, where it's turned into medical cannabis oil. Dr Michael Platt is a consultant pain specialist for the NHS, but he also works for Sapphire Medical Clinic. They're the first medical cannabis clinic to be approved by the Care Quality Commission. There are many patients who have managed to start it, but then, they haven't, then they've had to give it up because they can't afford it, because it was too expensive. So although it's OK for uh, NHS use, a lot of uh, NHS um, bodies are, can't afford it, so they haven't been able to access it. And a lot of patients are in an awful lot of pain because of that. There's no doubt that in the last couple of months, the numbers of patients coming to us have increased quite dramatically. And I think it's the realisation that the price has come down so much that's made the difference. It's come right down from well over £1,000 a month, now down to about £120 to £150 a month, depending on the medication. And for patients like Lee? If I could sum it up in two words, really, it would be freedom and safety. Um, the freedom to be able to move on with my life, not have to worry about the police and uh, the safety of buying off doctors and using something that's to a pharmaceutical standard. It's massively life-changing. It really is. Chris Hemmings, BBC News. Well, Dr Mark Wetherill is consultant neurologist at Sapphire Medical Clinic, which works with medicinal cannabis, and he joins me now. Good afternoon to you, Dr Wetherill. Um, so you've been prescribing medicinal cannabis for a year or so now. What do you prescribe it for? So uh, I see the new patients with neurological problems that uh, come to Sapphire Medical Clinic. So uh, initially we saw a lot of uh, young adults uh, and uh, my colleagues saw children with particularly nasty refractory epilepsy disorders for which medicinal cannabis is known to be very helpful. Um, but things have expanded and we're now seeing patients with other neurological conditions such as uh, MS, uh, headache disorders um, and uh, in other areas as well. So it's, 
it's quite interesting, quite exciting to see these people and many of the patients that we've treated so far have done very well. Mm. And how much of an issue has the price of these products been for you when you prescribe them? Well, I think it's always a, it's always been a concern. I mean, I think, you know, we all remember r reports from, you know, a couple of years ago of people having to source medicinal cannabis from the continent, uh, paying enormous prices for it and then risking having it uh, confiscated when they came back in the country. Um, and even a year ago, as that report said, you know, the costs were very high. The costs have fallen and the more that uh, uh, companies will, um, you know, be able to produce the product in this country, the more people that are prescribed the product, so the prices will continue to fall. And so that's going to make a huge difference to the uh, accessibility of, uh, of medicinal cannabis, uh, even, even in the private sector. But also, presumably, in the NHS. I mean, do you think the, the fact of the prices falling will mean that they're more available on the NHS? I think that will be one of the factors that will come into play. Um, the other thing is that, at, um, uh, you know, at Sapphire Medical Clinics, one of the main th things of interest for us is to collect data uh, and good quality data on the outcomes of people given medicinal cannabis. And that will feed into the process. There are very specific criteria that the NHS use to judge whether uh, medications can be prescribed on the NHS. And it's a matter of both of cost and clinical effectiveness. So the more data we can gather, the better the case can be made for the more widespread use of medicinal cannabis on the NHS. Mm. I mean, is there a slightly grey area when it comes to medicinal cannabis? Because the NICE guidelines say that it's an unproven medicine. So, I mean, the NICE guidelines are, are based very specifically on particular types of clinical trials. And traditionally, those have been very difficult to do uh, with medicinal cannabis products because they're so variable. And so very few companies have uh, invested the time and money to do trials of the type and nature that NICE uh, want to see for use. So uh, there is, on the other hand, a huge amount of evidence out there. There have been many studies done uh, in Israel, in Europe, in America, in Canada uh, over the last 20 years that demonstrate that medicinal cannabis is safe and is effective across a wide number of disorders, pain disorders, neurological disorders, uh, and so on. So more data is always helpful. More clinical trials would be great. And the the overall direction is showing that medicinal cannabis is useful in many areas and that I think eventually will you know, come to bear on NICE's decision-making process. All right. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. That's Dr Mark Weatherall there.